Greetings students and welcome to my video on solving a system of linear inequalities. In this video I'm going to derive the solution to a system of linear inequalities. I'd like to begin by thanking one of my patrons, James Mark Wilson, who gave me the idea for this video and actually derived the solutions that I presented here in video format. So suppose I have two lines, one given by ax plus by equals e and another given by cx plus dy equals f. Suppose that I wanted to find the set of points that were below both of these lines. In other words, suppose that I wanted to find the set of points which obeyed these two linear inequalities. Suppose also that these two lines that I've drawn are not parallel. In other words, they intersect each other at some point u comma v. If we want to solve the system of inequalities, the first step would be to find this point of intersection u comma v. The way to do that would be to solve these equalities. I trust that you can do this yourself and find that u comma v equals the following. Keep in mind that this solution only works when ad minus bc is not zero. When it is zero, the lines are actually parallel and so there is no point of intersection. This makes sense because if the lines are parallel then a and b are both multiples of c and d and if a and b are both multiples of c and d then it's easy to verify that ad minus bc would be zero. So we found the point of intersection, but how do we use this point of intersection to find the region of the inequality? Well, the first thing we do is that we can define the borders of this region of the inequality. In order to do that, I can start by traversing or translating down this straight line ax plus by equals e. The combination of translations that I can do to move my point of intersection down this line will define one border of my inequality region. Similarly, if I want to define my second border, I could start at my point of intersection, u comma v, and then I could traverse or translate this point down the second straight line, cx plus dy equals f. The combination of translations that I can do to move my point of intersection down the second line will define the second border of my inequality region. And what do I do once I have the translations from the point of intersection that define my borders? I can then combine those two translations and use that combination to define my region of inequality. So if I translate from my point of intersection down the direction of one line, then I translate again down the direction of the other line, I will have a point in the region of inequality. If I do this process again for another combination of translations, I will have another point in the region of inequality. And if I keep repeating this for every possible combination of translations, I'll be able to find every single point in my region of inequality and therefore I will be able to define my region of inequality. Let me repeat this because this is key. If I start at the point of intersection u comma v and I move down along this first line, then I'll still be at the first border. But then if I move again down the direction of the second line, I'll be inside the region of inequality. If I repeat these two translations over and over again, moving different distances each time, then eventually I'll be able to map out the entire region of the inequality. Hopefully you've understood this because this is essentially the crux of what we're trying to accomplish. So mathematically, here's what I have to do. Determine the mathematical form of the first translation, then determine the mathematical form of the second translation, and then combine those two forms to define the points that make up my region of inequality. Luckily, I can do all of this mathematically. If I start from u comma v, then the translation along the first line can be described by a point u minus rb comma v plus ra, where r is a variable parameter that's some real number. By changing r, I can move to different places along this first line. Now you can verify that this translation moves our point of intersection along the first line just by plugging it into the equation of the first line. And if you do that, you'll just get au plus bv equals e, which is essentially our point of intersection. And obviously it makes sense that the point of intersection would lie on the first straight line and would satisfy the equation of that first straight line. Similarly, if I start from u comma v, the second translation can be defined by u minus td comma v plus tc, where t is a variable parameter that's some real number. By changing t, I can move to different places along this second line. 
Again, we can verify that this translation moves our point of intersection along the second line by plugging it into the equation of the second line. And if you do that, you'll get Cu plus dv equals f, which again makes sense. Now we've translated the first coordinate in the point of intersection by negative rb in the first translation and by negative td in the second translation. So the combination of those two translations will be u minus rb minus td. Same idea for v. The second coordinate is translated by plus ra in the first translation and by plus tc in the second translation. So combining the two will give us v plus ra plus tc. So this point defines the region of inequality, but we're not quite done yet. R and T are real numbers, but they obviously can't occupy the entire space of real numbers because then our points wouldn't be restricted to this one region, they would be all over the place. That's why we need to find restrictions on R and T in order to completely define the region of inequality. And that's not too tough, all we do is substitute this point into the system of inequalities. Substitution into the first inequality will first allow us to cancel a, u, b, v, and e because they equal each other, and after cancelling these two common terms, we'll get t times a, d minus b, c is greater than or equal to zero, as the restriction on our t. Now if this first inequality happened to be a strict inequality, then this restriction on t would just be greater than instead of greater than or equal to. If we substitute this point into the second inequality and if we cancel all the equal or common terms, we'll get r times ad minus bc is less than or equal to zero as the restriction on r. Again, if the second inequality happened to be strict, then this restriction on r would just be less than instead of less than or equal to. So therefore, our solution to the system of intersecting inequalities is given by the set of points defined as u minus rb minus td comma v plus ra plus tc where these are the conditions on r and t and u is the point of intersection between the two lines corresponding to these inequalities. Again if the first inequality is strict then the condition on t is just greater than and if the second inequality is strict then the condition on r is just less than. All of what I've derived here is when the two lines corresponding to the system of inequalities are not parallel to each other. But what if we had a system of inequalities where the lines were parallel to each other? In that case, if the lines were parallel but not coincident, so not on top of each other, then A would be a constant multiple of C, so K times C for instance, and B would be the same constant multiple of D, so K times D. If we plug C and D into the second inequality in terms of A and B, then here's what we'll end up with. Now there's two possibilities with the constant K. The first is that K is positive, and if K is positive then the graphical picture we have looks something like this. We've got our two lines and our objective is to find the region underneath the line on the bottom. But in terms of our inequalities, what does that translate to? Well, it means that for our first inequality, ax plus by is less than or equal to e, this I'll label with 5. For our second inequality, it means that ax plus by is less than or equal to k times f, this I'll label with 6. Solving the system is pretty simple, we just have to find the combination of points x and y such that ax plus by is less than or equal to the minimum of e and kf. This makes sense because if ax plus by is less than the minimum of these two, then it's automatically less than the quantity that's not the minimum, so we would have solved the entire system just by solving the single inequality. And how do we solve this entire system? Let's go to our graph and label this bottom line as ax plus by equals the minimum among e or kf. We want to find the set of points which define the region below this line, the shaded region in red. How do we do that? Well, the strategy is pretty similar to what we did when the two inequalities intersected. The difference is that there's no point of intersection here, so what we do is we take some random point u comma v which lies on this line so it satisfies this equation. And finding this point shouldn't be too hard, just substitute a random number for u and find the corresponding v. Now once we found this point u comma v, we can determine the region of the inequality by first translating it parallel to the line by applying the translation of negative rb to u and positive ra to v, just like we did before. Again, r is a real number that represents our translation parameter. 
And once we've applied this first translation, what we can do is translate the translated point perpendicular to the line. So we apply the translation of negative SA to the first coordinate and negative SB to the second coordinate, where S is also a real number. Just like before, R and S behave as translation parameters, so for different combinations of R and S I can get different combinations of translations. And you can imagine that if I were to use every combination of R and S I would be able to define every point in this region of inequality. Now R is the parameter which allows me to translate my point parallel to the line, and since this line is the only border for my inequality region I can translate parallel to this line however I want. There is no restriction on my translation as long as I move parallel to the line. Therefore R can take on any value. However, S translates perpendicular to the line, and because my region of inequality looks like this, my perpendicular movement is restricted. For instance, I can't move perpendicularly above the line. That's why my parameter s will have restrictions, and let's go ahead and find them. To do that, we'll substitute the point u minus rb minus sa comma v plus ra minus sv, which defines our region of inequality into inequality number 7. When we do all the algebra, we'll find that negative sa squared minus sb squared is less than or equal to zero. And since a squared plus b squared is always positive, since we're ignoring trivial cases here, then s must be non-negative. So therefore, the solution to the system of parallel linear inequalities given by 5 and 6, where k is positive, is equivalent to the inequality in 7, and the set of points that satisfies this is given by u minus rb minus sa comma v plus ra minus sb, where r belongs to the real numbers, and s is greater than or equal to 0. Now u and v, keep in mind, is just a point on the line given by ax plus by equals the minimum of e and kf. Just to note, the restriction on s loses the equality if the inequality in 7 is a strict one. Now the last case we have to consider is when k is negative. I'm going to copy paste from what we had previously with the parallel system of inequalities. Now, if k is negative, and if I multiply both sides by k in this inequality here, the sign of the inequality will switch. So now our system of parallel inequalities is essentially a system of sandwiched inequalities. Graphically, this is equivalent to drawing two parallel lines and trying to find a region in between those two parallel lines. Again, the process of determining the set of points that defines this inequality region is similar to what we did before. Take a point u, v on one of the lines, say ax plus by equals e, then apply a parallel translation using the parameter r and a perpendicular translation using the parameter s. r will not have any restrictions because we can move parallel in whichever direction we want, but s will have restrictions because our perpendicular movement is confined to lying between these two lines. And how do we find the restrictions on s? We substitute this point into the system of inequalities in a. We can cancel out the terms that equal each other, and after a bunch of algebra we can show that s is restricted to lying within this interval. So therefore the solution to the system of parallel linear inequalities given by 8 is the set of points u minus rb minus sa comma v plus ra minus sv, where r is a real number and s belongs to this closed interval. Now if the inequality on the left is strict, then the restriction on s will not include the right endpoint, the e minus kf over a squared plus b squared. But if the inequality on the right is strict, the restriction on s will not include the zero. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I have an example problem and a solution for you guys to solve in the description if you'd like. I wish I could do it in this video, but my self-imposed time limit of 15 minutes prevents me from doing so. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and I've put a link to my Patreon in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.